Hey everyone, welcome back to The Crafty Couple. We hope you're having a fantastic day. We are super excited about today's video, some high-end decor DIYs that we've done using Dollar Tree products. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and let us know in the comments which project's your favorite. For this project, we're gonna be creating these little hanging wall planters using some dowels this uh, plunger handle and then also these little wood boxes from Dollar Tree. So you will need one plunger and then six of these little 12 inch dowels and then three of those wood boxes. I'm going to go ahead and start by spray painting the plunger handle and the dowels with that matte black spray paint from Krylon. Now while we're waiting for the paint to dry we can go ahead and move on to staining our boxes and you'll want to keep the little inserts that go in here because you can definitely use those for other crafts. And then what I'm using here is the early American stain from Minwax. Go ahead and stain all of these, the inside and outside. For the inside though, you don't have to go all the way down and get all of it. Anytime we can save product by just doing what we need to, we like to do that. So if you want to and have that full complete look, you can, but we're going to be putting stuff in there. So it won't really matter because you're not going to see the bottom of that anyway. Once everything has dried, we can move on to assembling everything. So what I'm going to do is take one of the dowels. I'm going to run a little line of hot glue on the edge there, and then we're going to glue these vertically. So you want to try and line that up with the side of the box and then the bottom of it. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So you want to do this on all three of our wood boxes. We're going to be gluing two of those dowels going vertical. Once we've glued everything on our boxes, we can move on to how we're going to hang this on the wall. And we're going to be using this plunger handle and then some of this suede leather. I believe we got it from Hobby Lobby. Um, maybe like five to eight dollars and it comes with quite a bit of it so I just cut a little section off here and then I'm going to measure to the center and cut that in half so that we have two separate pieces to hang on both sides of the plunger handle and so just go ahead and cut that in half and then here in a little bit we'll show you how we're going to hang that Next, what we want to do is find the center of our handle so that we can uh, glue our first box on there. It ended up being about eight and a quarter inches. So I just drew a little line with the pencil and then I'm just going to eyeball it here and try and get this first box as center as I can with that line. And then I put a little bit of glue on each end and then just laid this handle on top of it and pressed down until that, that was firm and then from here i can just kind of space out everything i laid my leather strip on the end and then i'm going to line up my other two boxes so that the spacing is pretty equal it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but by doing this you can get it really symmetrical if you want to do measurements you definitely can do that i think it's just a little bit extra work and you really won't notice it um, in the long run. So again, I just put a few uh, dabs of hot glue on the ends there and then I'm going to lift up the handle and then just place it on there and then try and get the bottom of each box lined up with the other boxes and then the gap in between the same as well. That way when you're looking at it, it all looks pretty uniform and symmetrical. And then I'm going to add just a little bit of hot glue here on these seams just to give it a little bit of added strength. Ultimately, they're not going to be holding much weight, so you should be fine. And again, if you guys want to use something stronger for a more permanent hold, you can definitely do that. Maybe some wood glue or E6000. We like to use the hot glue and it usually works out just fine for us and holds up pretty well. So to give it some volume and less weight, what I'm doing here is just adding in a couple paper towels kind of roll them up and put them in the box and then we're going to put some rocks on top of those that way it's covering up the paper towel but we're not filling it completely with rocks and adding all that weight and unnecessary product and then i'm just using a couple of succulents and a air plant here to go in these you could do these however you wanted to if you wanted to do a little bit more modern you could do that farmhouse i think this would also look good you could put maybe some like lamb's ear or something in there this really could go with a lot of different decor styles just depending on how you want to decorate it and then we're just going to loop these and then push the thumbtack through those and then the tacks will then go into the wall 
Again, there's really not a lot of weight to this, so you shouldn't have to worry about those falling out. For this project, you will need one pack of these five gallon stir sticks that we got from Walmart and they are 97 cents. To cut them down, I just kind of measured where it started to curve and then I drew a line and then just put the other ones up next to it so that they all had about the same length. To cut them, I just used this jigsaw that we got from Walmart and it has worked great for us. There's a link in the description below for this as well. After those were cut, I just sanded them down. To attach everything, I'm going to be using popsicle sticks or they're called craft sticks at Dollar Tree. I just didn't want hot glue in between all of my stir sticks, so this is how I decided to attach them together. So I just cut it about in half and then I put a little bit of hot glue on the back of the craft stick and then just put it directly onto the wood. Now you have this beautiful front piece that doesn't have hot glue running through everything. And then I grabbed another pack. We were only going to need one stir stick, but this is what we're going to use for the sides. To measure the sides, all I did was put it up to the other stir sticks and then draw a line and then did the same thing on the other side. I didn't do any exact measurements since a lot of the time when you do Dollar Tree or Walmart crafts like this, it'll be kind of an off measurement. Now we have those two side pieces cut and I'm going to be using these Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks. They're just Dollar Tree's Jenga blocks to attach the sides. So what I did was hot glue one side down and then the other side attaches directly to the side piece. Now that we have all of this done, we are going to just be doing the part in the back. I cut one more stir stick the same length and that's going to be going on the back so that you can hang it. Then I'm going to be staining everything with the early American stain from Minwax. When we are done staining, it is time to add that piece in at the back. It's going to go right here, and that's just so that you can hang it on the wall without any issues. I placed it where I wanted it to go, and then I'm going to be using Jenga blocks again and just putting them into the little area there, just so that they are nice and secure.
Now it's time to move on to the lighting. So I'm just going to be using these ones that we stocked up on for Christmas. You could probably use fairy lights as well. It just wouldn't be as bright. But I'm going to place them going one up and then one down, one up and then one down. That's kind of how they are laid out anyways. So it was super easy. I did hot glue this onto there. I would maybe tape it if I was to do this project again because I did end up taping all of the lights just so that you could move them around. And I didn't know how the hot glue would work on the wires. I just started on the very right side and then started taping them all so one going up and then one going down all the way across When they are all taped down, you can turn off all of the lights and see kind of how they are placed. I noticed one was slightly off, so I just moved it over, which is super nice if you use tape. You can move them kind of wherever you want so that it is nice and even. You could do this with any other color light as well, and it would look very pretty. When I turn it off, it does give a blue hue just because we are using a blue background. For this project we're going to be creating this hemp basket and this was a lot of fun to do and I think the end product looks really really good and high end. Um, it just does take some time to do it but the nice thing about it it's so simple you can just sit down watch a show and kind of go to work with it. So the first thing that I'm doing is just pulling a pretty long piece off here cutting it and then I'm going to glue it. You can start really wherever you want. I decided to start kind of on the corner on the top and then all I'm going to do is wrap start wrapping this around everything so add a little bit of hot glue to anchor down the starting point and then if you wanted to wrap it around a little bit and then add a little bit more hot glue and then continue wrapping um, as you can see here that way you don't have to worry about it coming undone and that's really all we're going to be doing is wrapping all of this in this polished hemp and then I'll show you here in a little bit kind of how I went about when you get to some of these crossing points, how I like to do it so that it gives it a nice complete look. Um, and that's really it. Like I said, it's something that you can easily do. Just sit down, put a show on. You can watch some of our videos if you want. And I think this would be a really fun project for you. And as you can see, once I get to where I started, I'm just going to add a little bit more hot glue wrap it around there pretty tight and then we'll cut off the end there and then once we cut it off you'll want to add a little bit more hot glue just to kind of get the frayed ends to stay together and stay down on the basket as well and then after i've done that top part what i did was start again just one row lower here on the horizontal wire and i'm going to go around the whole thing now, usually when I wrap anything, I like to keep the seams all on the same side so that you can position that on the back side of your project. So when you display it, it can be on the back and you'll never see that. When you're doing this, I found that it didn't really matter where you did it because you're not really gonna notice those seams. This hemp kind of uh, flows really well together and there's gonna be parts of it that are wider and smaller. So it all kind of, fits in really well so you don't have to worry about that as much but if you wanted to you could still glue it down to where all of those are on the same side so once I have all three of those layers done I'm going to start doing these vertical wires and again I'm just starting kind of in the corner here I'm going to put a little bit of glue on the inside edge there glue that top part down and then I'm going to also add a little bit of glue here on the edge and then wrap that around a few times, let it dry, and then I'll continue all the way down. So here's the part that I was talking about earlier. When you get to where these intersect, what I tried to do instead of going across like this is wrapping it around the backside. 
so that that intersection is going to be on the inside. And when you look at it this way, they kind of just seamlessly blend together and you don't have a bigger kind of uh, bulge or knot on the outside of it. And I think that'll help it look a lot cleaner. If that doesn't matter to you, then you can definitely just wrap it and not worry about it. But I tried to position it and wrap it so that when I got to those intersections, I could just wrap it around the backside and I wouldn't have to worry about that. So right here, I have the whole side complete and flip it over. We have the middle sections complete. And now all we need to do is finish these two outside parts. And these ones, you don't need as much of the hemp because you're only going to go down to the bottom since we already wrapped the bottom of the basket. So if you have some extra string that you had to cut off from an earlier step, you can use that just to go down. And then once we have all this complete, I'm moving on to these last three sections. You will need a longer um, string to do this part. And then we're just gonna do the same thing, glue the top down and wrap it all the way around. And then the last little bit, just to clean this up and make it look more polished, more high-end and absolutely perfect, is we just wanna singe off some of those extra um, parts that are on there and that'll clean it up really nice. Thanks for watching guys. We hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more high-end Dollar Tree DIYs, make sure to click through right here and you can check out our playlist of our other Dollar Tree DIYs. I know you'll absolutely love them, but as always, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you can be notified every time we upload a new video.